Hey everybody. So uh, this is gonna be a quick video today. Um, I've seen a lot of people talk about APRS and how APRS can be used in emergencies. And I've seen a lot of people um, talk about how it's useless because you gotta have a digipeter in range and so on and so forth. Oop, there's a spider, hello spider. And where's he going? <laughs> Bye bud. Anyway, um, people talk about how it's kind of useless because you you know, you have to have a digipeter nearby, you gotta get elevation, um, all sorts of other things. What I'm gonna do today is in about mm, six minutes, um, there's gonna be a pass in the International Space Station. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my FT5DR along with this MFJ Long Ranger to bounce my location off the International Space Station. Okay, now I've got a, a roll-up J-pole here as well. That would be a good choice for this also. I've even got the stock rubber duck and a signal stick. I've actually used all of these to do what I'm about to do. Yes, you can even do this with the stock rubber duck. You do not need a special antenna. You don't need a Yagi for this. You don't need anything crazy. Like I said, I'm gonna do it with this MFJ Long Ranger because that just gives me a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra oomph. Okay, the J-pole would probably work even better. Um, but for what we're going to do today, we're just going to use this guy. But I've done it with all of these antennas. <clears throat> so what I've got here is I have, this is something you have to kind of plan ahead of time. This is not something you can do on the fly. All right. So what I've got here is I've got a printout of every ISS pass for the next three days. Okay. With their times, the altitudes, the azimuths and everything. I printed this out from heavens above. What I do is when I go out uh, hiking or whatever, I always print one of these out and take it with me. Now I always use my, I always have my inReach Mini with me as a, as a primary um, emergency signaling device, but this works as a backup. So I can use this FT5 to send my location, to send emergency beacons. You can set this with an emergency beacon so that when it hits the APRS website, it will show an emergency beacon and anybody that's got an APRS transponder um, or receiver will get an emergency alert on their device if it hits their device. So let me get things ready to roll here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap antennas and I'll show you kind of how I do this. So um, I'll be back in just a minute, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, we'll see if we can hit the International Space Station with our beacon. Okay, so um, I've got things set up. So first things first, I've got my antenna on my HT. I have this set to the the ISS APRS frequency, which is my screen to come back on here 145.825 so that's the frequency that the ISS APRS functions on you also need to get your path set correctly so if I go into the path here in the APRS we go into our digipath so we go to digipath you need to have it set instead of your normal digipath to A R I S S. Okay. So once you have those things set, uh, this will be ready to roll. So what I've got is I've got this set up. I'm on the right frequency. I've got my path set correctly. Um, the next thing I'm going to do it now, you don't have to do this. This is, this requires internet obviously. So normally if you're in an emergency, you can rely on your chart here. But what I've got here is in my phone, I've actually got an application W1ANT um, satellite tracker. This works pretty well. If I click this ISS pass, which is the next thing coming up, and then I click location, this will show me where the International Space Station is, okay? So you can see where I am. I'm the little star, and you can see the circle for the ISS. And you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's moving. So that shows us when we're in the the actual path of the International Space Station. Now you see this portion is red, this is green, and this is yellow. I kind of have to wait until the satellite passes me a little bit before I'll actually be able to hit the digi. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got everything set up here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extend this antenna. Let me put you guys down for just a second here. And I'm going to extend the antenna. And then what will happen is, uh, in a couple of minutes here, you will start hearing packets hit this radio. Now, hopefully this will stand up. A little rickety with that big antenna on there. So in a minute here, I'll do this. I'll hold this up and do it by hand. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until I start hearing packets. You'll start hear packets hit this radio. As soon as I hear packets hit this radio, I know that the ISS is in range and I can start beaconing. Now I'm just gonna, if it's an emergency, 
just keep mashing that beacon button until you get a response on your radio. I don't know how many times it's gonna to take to actually get it to work. It usually doesn't work the first time. Usually you gotta hit beacon multiple times because there are other people trying to do it too. Now I don't wanna clog the APRS digi on the ISS up. Um, but in an emergency, I don't care. I'll just keep mashing beacon until it, I'll beacon it as many times as I can until the pass is over. Um, but so in a minute here, let's see, we're pretty close. All right, you can see that the space station's getting to be in range. We've got another, I don't know, couple of minutes here. Um, but in a couple of minutes here, you're gonna start hearing uh, packets hitting this radio. And as soon as I do, like I said, I'm gonna start beaconing. Um, normally, when you hit the ISS, you will get a response from it. So it'll tell you, it'll tell me, tell me uh, DEK K2AJT-7 on my radio telling me that it hit. Once it does, I will show you on APRS.FI that I've hit the ISS. You'll, I'll actually be able to confirm it. Um, and you'll notice that I am not in open sky. I am in dense tree cover. I'm in my woods, all right? So I've got woods next to my house that I've got like a little area set up in. I'm in there. There is some open sky out there, but I am under tree cover and I am in a valley. And I did that on purpose. All right. Um, one of the problems with using APRS in an emergency, and I don't recommend using it as your primary emergency method, but it's just another tool in the toolbox. But one of the problems is if you're trying to hit a digi, you do need some elevation, right? I've got to be able to get to that digipeter. And if you're in a valley and you're hurt and you got to hike up out of there, that's going to suck. Okay. Um, so this, it doesn't matter where I am. I can be in a valley as, as long as the, uh, as long as the International Space Station is over the horizon and my signal can hit it, it doesn't matter. All right. Now, if it's behind hills, obviously that's going to be an issue, but as long as it's high enough to be over the hills, um, we should be good. So we can see we're getting closer here. So we should start hearing packets here in another minute or two. Um, and again, you could use any of these antennas. Like I said, I've even done this with this stock rubber duck. I just beacon my, my radio just sent a beacon out. It set this beacon everything five, I think every five minutes normally. Um, it didn't hit anything because the space station is not in range yet. But I've even done it with this stock rubber duck. All right, you can actually do this with the stock antenna. I've never tried it with like a little stubby antenna before. But you got to remember, there's nothing between this radio and space, right? This signal just goes up and out. So it's not a huge deal as far as, you know, having obstructions. There's not really anything to obstruct the signal. It's just going up and out, right? Up into space. Um, so as long as the radio's got enough oomph to get out, it doesn't really matter. I mean, this is a 5 watt HT and I have no problem with it. I'm sure I could probably set this on low power and make it work too, because it doesn't take much to get up there. Um, so as you can see, we are getting very close here. All right, now the pass we're currently on, um, this app said 1118, heavens above says 1121 my time, all right, 1121 in 12 seconds is when it should be over the horizon, highest point is 1123, it's currently 1120, all right, so we should start seeing this come up pretty soon quick, pass ends here according to this at 1126, on the app it's at 1128, okay, um, so, um, this is a little more optimistic than this is. I have the feeling this is gonna be more accurate. And you can see, we are almost, I don't know if you can see that or not, but we are almost to the point where the space station is almost in range. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'll get my radio, and we should start hearing packets hit this radio pretty quick. Let me get out from under the tree here a little bit so it's not bumping the antenna. So in a couple minutes here, we should start hearing packets hit this radio. And as soon as I do, I'm going to go ahead and start beaconing. Now, like I said, the beginning of this pass, which we're under right now, we're not going to have a lot of signal. I kind of got to wait until the, the ISS passes me. Oh, there we go. There's our first, first packet hit the radio. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to beacon. This uses a lot of batteries. This is not something you want to. This is not something you want to do like all day long. You just want to do it when the pass is coming. Okay. I usually turn the radio on about five minutes before the pass. Listen for packets. I guess this might take a minute. We're definitely getting stuff from the space station.
And like I said, we might have to wait until the tail end of this pass because of where the digi is. On the and we're getting good packets now. Not decoding anything yet, though. There's one. That's not me, though. That's not me. There I am. All right, K2EJT, dash seven. So it just got me, okay? So it took me a couple of minutes, but I was able to bounce my signal off the International Space Station. You can hear all the packets coming in now, and you can see all the stations coming in now. And if we look, if we look at where, whoop, I'm hitting the tree with my antenna, because this antenna is huge. If you look at where we are, you can see, I don't know if you can see that on the map, but the station has passed us. Now we're just on the tail end of the, of the pass, okay? So what we'll do now is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this radio down. So let's go ahead, you can see we're still decoding packets. So let's go ahead and see, we're getting stations, that one's 917 miles away. It's cool when you get packets from these because they're really far away. So I've got APRS.FI open here, let me reload the page. Turn the volume down on this radio so we're not losing our minds with all these packets coming in. So now if I click myself, you can see that that packet came in, if you can see that or not, from R-S-O-I-S-S, -S, okay? And if we hit info, you can see it's got my location and it tells you the path was the International Space Station, all right? Like I said, I didn't have to do anything special here. Yeah, this is just a FT5DR with a MFJ long range on it. Like I said, you can even do it with this stock rubber duck. It does not take a lot to actually make this work, guys. Um, now, it works better with, uh, this is a, a half wave um, antenna. It works better with something like that. Wow, that, that's five, that, that last one was 5,400 miles away. The radio is going crazy. Um, but it works better with something like this J-Pole, or I don't usually carry the J-Pole. I usually carry this long ranger, or I've got a, uh, a smiley half wave also, which I kind of like better because it flexes a little bit, but this antenna tends to work a little bit better. Um, but they're six and one half dozen the other. But like I said, you can do it with the, with the signal stick. I've even done it with the stock rubber duck. So that's really all it takes to get your signal out to the International Space Station. It does not take much. Okay, guys. So a little planning ahead of time. Have your passes for, if you're going to go out for a day or two, print out the next couple of days worth of passes. All right. Pay attention to your time of day. And then as the time approaches, all right, like I said, maybe five minutes before the pass, turn your radio on, get everything set on the radio so that APRS is turned on, your, your, your modem's turned on, your GPS is turned on, you're on the correct path and you're on the correct frequency. And then just start listening for packets. And as soon as you hear the packets hit the radio, start blasting yours out. Um, and like I said, if I was in an emergency, I would just keep sending it and sending it. And I also would have set an emergency beacon on the radio and I would have set um, an emergency message on the radio also. So when that came down to everybody else's transceivers, they would have gotten an emergency message on their radio. Instead of seeing just a normal station message, it would have been an emergency message with, with an emergency uh, little image. Uh, but at any rate, guys, that's really all it takes. So for all those people out there that say, oh, you know, APRS, you need special stuff to be able to make it work with satellites, and it's useless if you can't hit a digi. Well, like I said, around here, I can hit a digi from just about anywhere. But if I can't, I always print this out. I stick it in my pack. And if I need to hit the ISS, I can send messages that way. I can send my location that way. There's all sorts of things you can do with this. So again, just another tool for the toolbox. Doesn't take anything special other than a radio with APRS. Or if you've got like a MobiLink TNC, so I've got a, a MobiLink TNC 4 that I use with my uh, FT65 and I can do the exact same thing, okay? Um, I like to use the FT5 because it's a standalone radio, right? I don't need the phone and I don't need the TNC. Everything's built into the radio, um, but any of that works. So at any rate, I just wanted to show you how that worked. It's pretty straightforward. Um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of food for thought. And like I said, this is just another tool for the toolbox. This should not be your primary means of emergency communication, right? Your primary means of communication is probably going to be a cell phone. Your secondary might be your radio. Your alternate might be um, uh, a, uh, like a, 
Garmin inReach or a Zolio or something like that. And then your contingency might be APRS through a satellite to get your signal out, okay? Always have more than one means of contacting people. Make sure, pe make sure people know where you're going ahead of time. Make sure they know what websites to check, right? So my wife knows that if I'm out hiking and, and I don't come home at a certain time or contact at a certain time, she knows to check the Garmin website for my, my position because I'll have my inReach running. And she also knows to check the APRS.FI website to see where my last position was. So I'll beacon those positions out and she can see where I am in real time. Also keep in mind one last thing that if you've got your ambiguity set on your APRS so that it's not your exact location, make sure you set it so it's your exact location. Because if, if emergency personnel are trying to find you, they need to know exactly where you are. And if it's off by a kilometer, that doesn't do them any good. So at any rate, everybody, um, hopefully that just gives you a little bit of food for thought, another tool for the toolbox. Um, I hope you found it informative and I hope you saw how easy that was. It really didn't take anything special. All right. I don't, I don't have a Yagi here. You know, I don't have anything crazy here. I've just got an FT5 and a $20 antenna. And like I said, it'll even work with a stock, stock rubber duck. All right, everybody. So um, with that being said, I guess we'll end it for this one. Um, I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. 7-3.